These are the last moments of Hala Hrace's life. You can see her here, leading a group of 30 odd people. They wave white flags, a plea for safe passage out of their neighborhood, now surrounded by Israeli forces. She holds the hand of her five-year-old grandson Tayim tightly, and then suddenly, Little Tayyam quickly runs away as her son Mohammed rushes towards her. If you slow the video down, you can see Hala start to turn just before she is shot, as if she had caught sight of something. From the angle of her fall and the movement of the fleeing group, it is clear that the bullet came from the west or the south. CNN has geolocated the intersection. Mohammed told us when he reached his mother, he looked up and saw two Israeli tanks ahead of him to the south. And just 200 meters to the west, we know Israeli troops were stationed at the new Gaza prep school for boys, as captured here in satellite images and a photograph published on November 12th, the day Hala was killed. It's really hard for me to look at the pictures, but I try to remember the beautiful gatherings that we used to share together. Hala's 18-year-old daughter, Sara, was further back in the group. Now safely in Istanbul, she tells us the family had agonized over whether to leave their home, but after two nights of the most intense bombardment yet, decided to move. I remember that my mom, after we all sat down and discussed, she got up and went to the kitchen to make breakfast for everyone in the house. When she was making breakfast, she also went to pray a duha prayer. It's really hard. Really hard. Take your time. My mother was my whole life. She was my friend and my everything. She wants Hala to be remembered as she was in life, a devoted grandmother who still made Sara sandwiches to take to university for lunch, a retired Arabic literature teacher beloved by her students and family. The month before October 7th had been the happiest of times for the family, celebrating Sara's engagement and Mohammed's graduation from university. My mother was going to be 58 years old on December 30th and had her grandson with her, so why would you shoot her? What's between you and her? You made us feel like it's safe to leave. We had white flags on our hands, so what happened? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. It is a question many are asking as more videos have emerged of unarmed civilians displaying white flags apparently shot dead. The Geneva-based Euromed Human Rights Monitor tells CNN they are investigating nine such incidents. We analyzed four. The most widely reported is the shooting of the three Israeli hostages, who the IDF admitted killing under the mistaken impression that their surrender was a trap. <laughs> the most recent incident, just this week in Mawasi, in southern Gaza. 51-year-old Ramzi Abu Sahlul says he is trying to get back to the house where his brother is being held by Israeli forces to plead for his release. The camera zooms in on two Israeli tanks beyond a berm. A drone can be heard overhead. Ramzi and four other family members move tentatively forward, hands in the air, white flag held high. Then suddenly, a burst of gunfire. Ramzi falls to the ground. If you slow down the video, you can see the impact of the first round against the wall clearly fired from the direction of the tanks. The men hastily drag Ramzi's body away, the white flag now soaked in blood. His wife runs after him, but he is already dead. 
Another video obtained by CNN was recorded by journalist Rami Abu Jamus on November 10th. He says the IDF ordered his family to evacuate their home and to carry white flags. As they walk, gunshots can be heard. On the other side of the street, a man is wailing over the body of his dead son. <laughs> I told you, let's stay home, my son, he says over and over, still clutching his white flag. If only we had stayed home. <laughs> Around the corner, two more people shot, also carrying white flags. CNN cannot say who fired the shots. We sent the coordinates of all the incidents to the IDF and repeatedly asked for comment. Hala Khreis was buried in a shallow grave in a small alleyway next to the family home, her gravestone written in chalk. Her family hopes there will be justice for her killing and a proper burial when this war is finally over. We flew to Israel to sit down with the IDF and we offered to share our findings and footage with them on or off camera. Ultimately, they declined to meet us, but several hours after our report first aired, they did provide us with this statement, quote, CNN refused to provide the footage in question prior to the broadcasting of the article as the IDF requested to receive in order to thoroughly examine the incident and provide any sort of comprehensive response. CNN's hesitancy to share the materials discloses the partial nature of their report, doing a disservice to the complex nature of the operational reality on the ground. The incident is being examined. The IDF statement does not say which of the incidents in our report is in fact being examined. And just to reiterate, we repeatedly offered the IDF to come and meet with them ahead of publication and show them and go over our findings. Clarissa Ward, CNN, Jerusalem.